Hello friends, I'm Miss Vesga, and on today's Kindergarten ELD lesson, we'll be learning about found material arts. Let's see what our goal is. Today we will learn about and create found material art. What does found material art mean? Well, it means when you find your different materials, it could be around your house, it could be recycled materials, you find different materials that you use to create art with. Let's take a look at an example of found material art. If you go to the art museum, you can see many different types of found art creations, just like this one from El Anatsui. This one is called Rain Has No Father, it's created with a lot of different found materials, including some bottle caps and some pieces of metal. Let's look a little bit further into what different types of pieces of found material there are, and also what is the reasoning behind why he made this piece of art. In creating The Rain Has No Father, El Anatsui was inspired by the grandeur of the Rocky Mountains. The silver cloth is perforated with slashing vertical elements, symbolizing the rain which gives way to life forms. The three multicolored blocks spread across the top are formed from hundreds of pieces of metal carefully made into tiny open squares, perhaps suggesting clouds holding masses of rain droplets about to be released. I can see where he finds that this looks like clouds with rain droplets and this can symbolize mountains with the shining silver and this vertical perforations. Let's look closer at some of the materials he used. One of the materials he used was bottle caps. When they were flattened they were about four inches long and one inch wide. There are a bunch of bottle caps that he used it's estimated that he used 9,000 bottle caps in this creation. Another thing he used was copper wire. The copper wire he used to sew the pieces of metal together. Even though this creation was made with metal, it was created so that it could be folded just like fabric. Light passes through creating a shadow on the wall. El Anatsui is known for creating art out of found materials like driftwood, clay, paper, and bottle tops. He draws on a combination of African aesthetic traditions as well as Western art history. You can see that he has used different found materials in his art here. We've learned a lot about Rain Has No Father, and we've learned a lot about found materials that are used in art. Let's see if we can find some other materials that we can use in art that we create today. I found some materials around my house that we could use to create art with today. Let's take a look at some of them. I found a plastic bag. This is nice and big and it can be held upright so that I can hang up my work of art. Do you have a plastic bag too? Mine is gray, and it is not shiny. Another thing I found is string. It is long, and it feels like a rope. You can use string in your art to create different shapes. Another thing I found are pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners are bendy. They can be used to create any shape. They are white and black. Another thing I found are sticky notes. These ones are green. Sticky notes are great because on one side it's sticky and on the other side it's not. I can also use sticky notes to draw on. Another thing I found are paper towels. Paper towels I found in my house. They can be used and ripped up. They can be used to create a whole bunch of different shapes. I can also color on paper towels if I needed to. Paper towels are white. They would take color very easily. Another thing I found are soda tab caps. These soda tabs are silver and oval. I could think, hmm, 
I can stitch these together to create something very nice for my found art piece. Another thing that I found is cardboard. You can use cardboard from any source at your house. The one that I found is gold and shiny and I know that I'm going to use it for something really pretty. Maybe clouds, maybe mountains, maybe a river. We'll find out. Do you have materials at home? You can look at your house. Make sure that you're being safe. Try to find different materials you could use. You can use things that I have. You can use new things. You can find it anywhere around your house. And just like El Anatsui, we're going to reuse them to create art. You're going to need some scissors and some glue. Make sure you're careful when you're looking for your scissors and glue. I'm going to start with gluing my plastic bag. I want to make sure that it doesn't open while I'm working, and so I'm going to glue the inside of it together. I put some glue, and then I line it up, and then I lay it flat. Even though I can see the glue right now, it will disappear as it dries. I'm gonna put a little bit extra glue at the top because that's where it's going to hang when it is finished. Now we have a pretty solid base for our found art. My first step was to glue the plastic bag together. My next step is to create a background. I want to use the shiny gold piece of cardboard for the background. You can use scissors or you can tear the background. I'm going to use both. I'm going to tear and I'm going to use scissors. Now that I've cut some pieces and ripped some pieces of our cardboard, I'm going to place it in the background to create mountains. Just like El Anatsui was inspired by the Rocky Mountains, those are here in Colorado too, I'm going to be inspired by the Rocky Mountains as well. Let's line it up however you think looks good. I'm going to line it up before I glue it down. There. I think that looks like mountains, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that to my plastic bag. Now that I've glued the pieces that I like together, I'm going to recycle the rest of my cardboard.
The next material that we're going to use is the paper towels. Hmm, what do paper towels look like? They're white, they're fluffy, they're kind of soft. Hmm, they remind me of clouds. I think for the clouds, I'm going to tear up pieces of, of paper towel to create clouds. Let's see, clouds are white, they're fluffy. Does that look like a cloud? It's white and fluffy. I think it does. I'm going to glue that one there. Let's make another cloud. There. Does that look like a cloud? It's also white and fluffy. I'm going to glue that one there. I think I'm done using the paper towels. I'm going to recycle this. The next material I'm going to use are the pipe cleaners. Hmm, what could I use the pipe cleaners for? Well, they're very bendy and they're also white. I know that I could probably use them as a walkway. Let's see. I think I want to use it in a circle. Let's turn it into a spiral. I'm going to turn it into a circle and let's see what that creates. Ooh, I like that. Let's use it as grass. Even though it's not green, I can use my imagination and pretend that it's the grass in my found art creation. Now that I'm done with the pipe cleaners, I'm going to recycle the rest of the pipe cleaners. The last two items are my string and my soda tab caps. Let's see, how can I fit these together? The string is long and it feels like a rope. The bottle, the soda tabs are silver and oval. Hmm. I think I can weave them together just like El Anatsui did. Let me try what he tried, by, but he used metal. Oh, look at that. 
I think I'm going to create a river out of this. Now that I have all of my materials that I want to use glued down, my found art creation is finished. I use the white fluffy paper towels to create clouds. I use the gold 
cardboard to create mountains. The soda tabs and stream created the river, and the pipe cleaners created the grass. The rest of my materials will be recycled, so, and if I want to use different materials, I can. In this case, I don't want to use my, my post-it notes, so I'm going to put them to the side and reuse them at a different time. My string, my extra cardboard, and my extra pipe cleaners will all be recycled or used in a different craft time. Let's go check out some of the words that we used when we were describing some of the materials that we used. Let's use our sentence stem to talk about some of the materials that we used. The sentence stem says, the materials I used were, hmm. The hmm is where we put the materials we used. So let's review. I used a plastic bag. The materials I used were a plastic bag. The next material I used was cardboard. The materials I used were a plastic bag cardboard, paper towels, pipe cleaners, string, and soda tabs. Let's put that all together in our sentence stem to create one sentence. The materials I used were plastic bags, paper towels, cardboard, pipe cleaners, string, and soda tabs. Listen to me say it one more time and then I wanna hear you repeat it. The materials I used were plastic bags, paper towels, cardboard, pipe cleaners, string, and soda tabs. Tell me what you used in your creation. Wow, that's a lot of materials and thank you for using our vocabulary words for materials. When we talk about our different materials, we're going to use describing words to describe the different types of materials and what they look like and what they feel like. The first word we're going to use is the word shiny. Which material was shiny? I think it was the shiny mountains. The next describing word we're going to use is fluffy. Which material was fluffy? Hmm, maybe the paper towel. The next material is long. Which one was long? Long like the river, which was created by the stream. The next material is oval. Which one was oval? Oh, the soda tabs were an oval shape. Some materials were bendable. Which material did we use that was bendable? What did we bend? Oh, the pipe cleaners. Some materials were gold. Which one was gold? I think it's the mountains. The cardboard we used was gold. Some material was silver. Which one was silver? I know, the soda taps were silver. Some material was white. I can think of two. Can you see the white materials? That's right. The white materials were the paper towels and the pipe cleaners. Now that we can describe all of our materials with the describing words, let's use our sentence starter to create some sentences. The sentence starter is, the hmm is hmm. We're gonna use our material words in the first blank and are describing words in the second blank. For example, the cardboard is shiny. I could also say the cardboard 
is cold. Why don't you say that sentence with me? The cardboard is gold. One more time. The cardboard is gold. Very nice. Let's try a different material. Hmm. I could also pick the bendable pipe cleaners. Let's do that in a sentence. The pipe cleaner is hmm bendable. Is that right? Are pipe cleaners bendable? That's right. Pipe cleaners are bendable. Let's do our sentence one more time. Listen to me say it. The pipe cleaner is bendable. Your turn. Very nice. Let's pick a different material and describe that material. Let's pick the plastic bag. The bag is, let's see, is it shiny, fluffy, long? It's long. The plastic bag is long. Let's pick one more. I'm going to pick the soda tabs. Ooh, the soda tabs we can describe very easily with a couple of different words. Here's the word soda tabs right here at the bottom. Let's use soda tabs as we are describing our materials. The soda tab is, what do you think? I think the soda tabs are silver and oval. Let's use both of those in a sentence. The soda tab is oval and silver. Let's do both all together again. The soda tab is oval and silver. One more time, listen to me say it so that you can get it perfect. The soda tab is oval and silver. Now it's your turn, let me hear you say it. Ready? The Very nice job. Let's try practicing some writing with our sentence stems. To practice writing our sentence starters, you are going to need a pencil, pen, or marker, and a piece of paper. Go find those materials now. Have our materials we can go ahead and use our sentence starter. The first sentence starter was the materials I used were think back to the materials that we used. Well, the materials that I used were a, a lot. The first thing I used was a plastic bag. A plastic bag. What else did I use? Oh, I know, I used cardboard.
Looks like I need more space. So I can take my pen, my marker, and draw another line. The materials I used were a plastic bag, cardboard. What else did I use? Let's think. I used paper towels. Pipe cleaners. String. And soda tabs. Let's say the sentence all together. The materials I used were a plastic bag, cardboard, paper towels, pipe cleaners, string, and soda tabs. Now here comes a really important sentence starter. The hmm is hmm. Let's write that two times so we can practice two times. The hmm is hmm. Which material should we start with? I know. Let's start with the cardboard. In the sentence, it's going to say the cardboard is, what was that describing word? You're right. That describing word was shiny. The cardboard is shiny. Let's write that. The cardboard is shiny. Let's read it again. The cardboard is shiny. Your turn to read it. Very good. Let's pick one more material that we can place in this blank. Let's pick soda tabs. The soda tab. Soda tab. The soda tab is, hmm. Well, let's think. Soda tabs look like this one. Are the soda tabs fluffy? No, we can't use that describing word. Are the soda tabs white? No, we can't use that describing word. I know, the soda tabs are silver. Let's write that. The soda tab is silver. Let's read it together one more time. The soda tab is silver. And now it's your turn. Very nice. Friends, thank you so much for joining me today. We learned a lot about El Anatsui's Rain Has No Father. We let it inspire us to create our own found materials art. He used different materials that he found to create his art. And we did the same thing. He was inspired by the Rocky Mountains and we were also inspired by the Rocky Mountains. We used different vocabulary words and described the different materials that we found. Let's see if we met our goal today. Today we will learn about and create found material art. Did we do that? Nice job, high five. We did such a great job learning about found material and describing the art after we finished making it. Friends, I'm so happy that you joined me today learning about found material and creating it. And I can't wait to see you next time on Learn With Me. Bye-bye.
Hi friends, it's me, Miss Steckmeyer, and I teach first grade at Strive Prep Ruby Hill in Southwest Denver. And this is your ELD, or English Language Development lesson, for kindergarten and first grade around the intermediate or advanced stage. However, we would love everyone to join us. Because remember, in ELD, we practice listening in English, speaking in English, writing in English, and reading in English. Today's lesson is called Building a Sculpture. Yes, some of you might already know what a sculpture is because as you know, it is art week. It's art week and a sculpture is a type of art, artwork. So let's talk about our language objective. It says, I can use comparative adjectives, what? To describe a sculpture. We'll get into it, don't worry. We also have a heart goal, a goal for our heart. It says, I can persevere when things get hard. I'm so excited to talk to you about these two objectives today. Let's get started. Okay, friends, guess what? I just had a baby. Do you wanna see a picture of him? Okay. His name is Remy. Isn't he cute? Remy was born early. He's really small. In fact, he's smaller than a lot of babies when they're born. So he's going to stay in the hospital and get big and strong. And he's going to come home when he's bigger. Bigger. That has to do with our language for today. And you know what? It also has to do with our heart goal. Sometimes I feel sad that Remy's not home yet. But I know that I can persevere. That means I keep going even when things get hard. And I know you can persevere too. I bet there are some things in your life that you've already worked really hard on. I'm going to tell you a story now about today's artist and how he persevered to build his art. Ready? Here we go. So today's story doesn't have a book. It's just my voice and some pictures. So if you'd like, you can act out the story with me. And I want you to listen for how the artist persevered in his life. Here we go. So today's artist is called Mark DeSuervo. Mark DeSuervo and he was born in China. And when he was little, actually, just your age, he remembers going to visit the Forbidden City or the Imperial Palace. And he remembers thinking, wow, this is so big and beautiful. I love this place. Pretty cool, huh? After that, when Mark was about seven, he moved to the United States and he traveled around and he worked on art. He worked on building sculptures. So sculptures are pieces of art that are 3D. You might know that from math class, 3D shapes. 3D shapes have length and width and depth. That means they can stand up on their own, or you might be able to hold them in your hand. They're not flat. They're out and about. So Mark was a construction worker. That's what he did as a job. And he used things like steel rods. He used things like old tires. And he created artwork or sculptures out of those found objects on the construction site. Now, something kind of sad happened. When he was working on the construction site, he hurt his hip really bad and he had to use a wheelchair. For 10 years, he used a wheelchair to get around. And after that, guess what he did? He persevered 
and he kept making his artwork. He learned how to use crutches and arm braces to walk around. And he also used a lot of cool equipment like a cherry picker, which is a machine you ride in, and cranes, and welding equipment in order to make his new art. He persevered and continued making sculptures even when his legs weren't working right, even when he needed to use big machines and he, and he had to use his crutches. He persevered, and guess what he made? You've probably seen it if you've driven past the library downtown or the Denver Art Museum. He made this sculpture. Pretty cool, right? It's called Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu is the name of a Chinese philosopher that Mark likes. This sculpture is amazing. Do you think it's bigger or smaller than the playground you play on? Hmm. It might be bigger. It's very big. It's made out of big steel rods called I-beams. I-beams. Mark made this sculpture and now it lives in the plaza between the Denver Public Library and the Denver Art Museum. So this is the sculpture we're going to talk about today and it's what we're going to model some artwork of our own after. Before we build our own sculpture, let's talk about Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu is bright red. Now it's bright red to contrast with the blue Colorado sky. How cool is that? The red of the sculpture and the blue of the sky work together to create art. You'll also notice that there are curves in the sculpture or circles, as well as straight lines and hard angles. Both of those can be in the sculpture you create. You might also notice there's a little L at the top of the sculpture that moves with the wind. So this sculpture interacts a lot with nature. That must be why it's outside. It works together with the wind. It works together with the sky. And you might also notice that when the sun hits the sculpture, there are shadows. And the shadows add a little bit of mystery, I think, to the sculpture. So the sculpture is also interacting with light and the sun. Now I want to challenge you to think about what do you want your sculpture to look like? It can be abstract like Lao Tzu, something brand new that you've never seen before that works with nature to create something cool. Or it could be something you have seen before. All right. I think we're ready to build sculptures of our own. I'm so excited because I've been preparing and I've been collecting toilet paper tubes and paper towel tubes and boxes from around the house. If you don't have those things, that's fine. You could also just use paper, fold up paper. You could use your own Legos, your own building blocks. You could even use rocks from outside. You could use sticks from outside. I think that's really fun to make sculptures out of nature. So whatever you have, take one minute, go grab those things, and let's make a sculpture together. See you in one minute.
Okay, so here I am with some of the objects I found in my house that I could make a sculpture with. I have some glue, some tape. This is heavy duty tape, so if you're using tape like this, ask an adult to help you. It's already stuck. <laughs> I have scissors, some of my favorite colors, and I have a paper towel tube. I have some toilet paper tubes. This is a box. And this is a cone I made for one of my math minute lessons. So for my sculpture, first I need to start with an idea. And it's okay if you want to make circular lines or you want to make straight angles like the sculpture we looked at today. That would be really cool. You could play with the shadows. See how the shadows fall. Ooh, yeah, there's a shadow. That's pretty cool. You could make things different colors so they could contrast like the sculpture we looked at today. I am just feeling inspired to make a castle. So I'm gonna do that. I think my castle is gonna have those like windy staircases right here in the corner. All right, let's see if this glue will work. Hold it down. Sometimes in my classroom at Ruby Hill, when someone's working hard, ooh, that's tricky. When someone's working hard, or the teacher is stuck with technology, their computer's loading or something, the kids will start cheering. They'll start going, persevere, persevere. It's pretty cute. Something you could tell yourself in your head when you're working hard on something. You could tell yourself, persevere, persevere. There we go. See if this works at all. I don't know. I might have to really persevere on this. Get this glued down. Let's try this one. Okay. Remember to persevere. If something's not turning out the way you want it, that's okay. Keep working. Oh, there's my windy staircases. It's pretty cool. And I'm thinking like a big, ooh, that's really tall. <laughs> I'm thinking like a big tower. Big tower right in the middle. Oop. See how good that stays. Okay, got my glue. Goodness. Persevere. 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 Maybe you're using Legos. Maybe you're using another type of block in your house. Maybe you're using something from nature for your sculpture. I bet they're more creative than mine. different sort of castle. Now I want one of those cool castle doors, like a drawbridge. So I'm gonna use the scissors. If you're using scissors, make sure to get an adult to help you. Oh man, I'm gonna need a different strategy, okay. Here comes the tape. All right. Ooh. One more. <laughs> okay. Ooh. That's better. That's better. That's what I wanted. Okay. I'm working on the drawbridge. Oh, that's hard. 
Persevere. Persevere. Functional drawbridge, that's pretty cool. Coming up and down. All right, let's see. Do you wanna add some colors to this cone? We talked about those contrasting colors we saw in our sculpture. I'm gonna add some, some stripes. It's pretty inspiring the red sculpture against the blue sky. If you're using Legos or blocks or something from nature, you could look for those contrasting colors. Maybe you have construction paper at your house. That's a good one to use too. colors. Boop. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. I might add some other colors or decorations, but I'm pretty happy with my castle here, friends. I persevered pretty hard on this. Cool. Now I can also play with this sculpture, huh? Now that we've made our sculptures together, we are ready to talk about them in our language practice. Here we go. Time for our language practice. Remember, our language goal was I can use comparative adjectives to describe a sculpture. We're gonna describe our own sculptures today. Comparative adjectives are adjectives or describing words that help us compare. Some examples of comparative adjectives are bigger, smaller, taller, shorter, weaker, and stronger. Do you notice a pattern about any of those words? I notice they all end in ER. That's an easy way to tell if a word is a comparative adjective. Not always just sometimes. Use your brains. Okay, here we go, here we go. I want you to think about your sculpture and the Lao Tzu sculpture. Let's compare them in our minds. I'm thinking about the castle I made. Hmm, my sculpture is mm than that sculpture. That's what we're gonna do first. I'm thinking of the Lao Tzu sculpture. Let's see, my sculpture is bigger? No, 
definitely smaller than the Lao Tzu sculpture or that sculpture. My turn first and then we'll say the sentence together. My sculpture is smaller than that sculpture. Your turn with me. Ready, go. My sculpture is smaller than that sculpture. Nice work. If you're at home and maybe you did this activity with a brother or sister, I'm going to challenge you to use some other pronouns here, like his sculpture or her sculpture or your sculpture. But today with my friends, I'm just going to use that sculpture. Okay. Now I'm thinking, hmm, my castle, is it taller or shorter than Lao Tzu? Definitely shorter. My turn first. My sculpture is shorter than that scul sculpture. Ready? Now with me, go. My sculpture is shorter than that sculpture. Nice work. Hmm, now we have weaker and stronger. My sculpture is made out of cardboard and glue and tape. Lao Tzu is made out of eye beams, which are steel. Really heavy stuff. I'm going to say my sculpture is weaker. If there was a big storm, it would probably fall over. Okay, my turn first. My sculpture is weaker than that sculpture. Your turn with me. Ready, go. My sculpture is weaker than that sculpture. Nice job. We just used comparative adjectives, adjectives to describe a sculpture or to compare two sculptures. Thus concludes today's lesson, building a sculpture. But first, before we go, I want you to think to yourself, did you use comparative adjectives to describe a sculpture today? Give yourself a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm still working. Think about it. I bet most of you can give yourself a thumbs up. Now think about it. Did you persevere when things got hard? If you did, give yourself a thumbs up. And you know what? I think this is one heart objective that we can always be working on, right? Okay, thanks for joining me, friends. I hope to see you next time. Bye. <laughs>
I want you to listen for the types of words I use to create a picture in your brain or an emotion or feeling in your heart. I jump out of bed. It's time to prepare for another day with my favorite people in the world. The caterpillars are snuggled in their cocoons. The room is buzzing with drum beats and thumb piano plunking. My learners are whispering poetry and laying out rainbow tiles to tackle hard math. When they use mature words and treat each other with kindness, I think how grown up they are becoming and my heart swells like a hot air balloon. I am the luckiest teacher alive. Did that poem make you feel anything or make you picture something in your head? That's what poetry can do. It's like a type of art using just words. Today, we're going to learn how to write one. Now you have heard me use a word a lot that might be new. That word was emotion. Say that with me, emotion. Emotion is another word for feeling, right? What are some feelings that you have some days, right? Happy, sad, angry, Emotions can be lots of different feelings, and we will need some emotion words today to write our poem. Let's brainstorm. Let's think of some emotion words that you know, and maybe I can teach you some new ones. So we already said the usual ones, right? Happy, sad. What other emotions? Angry. Hmm. I'm going to add some that might be new. Similar to happy is joyful. Joyful. It means you have joy in your heart. You feel extra happy. Joyful. Make that face with me. Joyful. Okay. Ooh, another word for angry is furious. Let me see you make that face. Furious. You're so angry, you're going to explode. Furious. Okay. Furious. Another good one that I use a lot in my poetry is peaceful. Say that with me. Peaceful. Right? It means you're calm. Your heart is filled with peace. Maybe you're resting. Peaceful. Okay, we can add more to this list today, but these are some emotions that you might feel when you're writing poetry. Okay. Last week, we talked about a type of word called verbs. Do you remember what verbs are? I heard some of you say it. Verbs are action words, right? So punch, walk, talk, eat, draw. Those are all verbs, okay? So when we say verbs, we're gonna say, do this, verbs, right? Verbs are action words. We learned those last week. We will need a new type of word today, which are Adjective. Say it with me. Adjective. Here we go. Adjectives are describing words. Okay, that's why I put these little sunshine rays to remind you that adjectives are describing words like shiny, sticky, stinky, tall, short, right? When you look at something or someone, what words can you use to describe them? So I just said some adjectives, right? Short, you could say my mom is short, my cat is loud. What else? You could say that apple is shiny. What else? Um, let's see, that sticker is sticky or the honey is sticky. Do you notice that a lot of adjectives end with Y? They end with that E sound, shiny, sticky, happy, stinky, right? But not all of them, loud, short, hard, right? The test was hard, okay? So lots and lots of adjectives make a good poem, okay? Now that we have some new words in our tool belt, let's put them to use and write some poetry. Are you ready?
Okay, to get our brains thinking like poets, we are going to use a photograph from the Denver Art Museum. This photo is called Nelly and her Italian soda, and I'm going to show it to you right here. I'm going to ask you some questions about this photograph. Who do you see in it? There's a little girl. What is she doing? Mm, she is drinking a soda. What colors do you see? Mm, I see some red, some green, some peach color. Does this, does looking at this photo make you feel any emotions? Mm, maybe it makes you feel relaxed or calm or thirsty. What do you think Nelly, this little girl, was doing before she drank her soda? Ah, maybe she was playing soccer or baseball, right? How can you tell? Hmm, looks like she's wearing a soccer jersey, right? A soccer shirt. Hmm, so maybe she was hot after soccer practice and she's drinking her soda to calm, to cool down. Okay, did you know that Nellie's dad was the one who took this photo? He was the photographer. And her, the photographer's name is Robert Benjamin. He lives in Fort Collins, Colorado. Okay, check out on the map. Fort Collins, Colorado is north or up from Denver, which is where I live. Is Fort Collins close to where you live in Colorado? Hmm. So the artist that took this photo is from our own state and Nellie is his daughter. So let's use this photograph to write a poem about it. Photos can be a great way to think of a memory or a picture to help us write our poem. Okay, let's get started. Nellie and her Italian soda. I'm going to use a note catcher to help me think of some ideas to write this. First, when you look at this photo, well first the topic, I'm going to write the topic is Nellie, little girl, and her soda. Just a normal moment after soccer practice for a little girl. Right, when we looked at this photo, what were some adjectives that came to mind? Remember, describing words. You could describe the soda, the little girl. Mm, some describing words I thought of were thirsty. Ooh, she was thirsty. Maybe hot or sweaty, right, after soccer sweaty, mm. um, cold, the ice in the glass looked cold, or another word for cold is chilly, chilly, okay, do you see how a lot of adjectives end in Y? Not all of them, but a lot of them end in chilly, sweaty, thirsty, okay, emotions. What does this photo make you feel? Does it make you feel anything? For me, it makes me feel that word that we talked about. Let's look back at our emotions. It makes me feel peaceful, right? She just played a big soccer game and now she can <gasps> drink her soda and feel peaceful. Another word for peaceful is calm. It makes me feel relaxed. Okay, those are emotions, how it makes me feel. And finally, we need some verbs, right? Verbs are action words. So there, it, I know it's a photo and it's not moving, but what actions come to mind when you look at this photo? Hmm. And we're going to change our verbs a little bit, okay? So my verb that, make, that it makes me think of is drink. I'm going to add three letters on the end. Drinking. Drinking, right? So I would say Nellie is drinking. 
She's doing it right now. Nelly is drinking. What else? Nelly is rest. What were those three letters? I N G. Resting. Nelly is resting. Nelly is drinking. What else? Nelly is sipping. Sipping, right? Maybe she's not drinking real fast. She's sipping. Nelly is sip ing. There's that three letters I N G. Nelly is drinking. Nelly is resting. Nelly is sipping. Okay, this was my brainstorm. Now I have a lot of words I can use to make my art, right? My poetry art. That's our next step. I'm going to name my poem the same as the photograph, Nelly and her Italian soda. And I'm going to use the adjectives, verbs, and emotions we just thought of to help me write my poem. So I'm going to start by saying Nelly played soccer today. Let's think back to my adjectives. Oh, now she is, how do you feel after soccer? Oh, sweaty and thirsty. Okay, period. What were some verbs? Let's get a verb in there. She is, she is sipping. Don't forget the ing. She is sipping a soda. I want to describe the soda. The soda is green like a, what else is green? Grape. I like the way that sounds. Green like a grape. Gr gr green like a grape. Okay. I see there's ice too. The ice in the glass is, what's that sound ice makes in a glass when you shake it around? Tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Clink. Clink. The ice in the glass is clink. What three letters? Clink-ing. The ice in the glass is clink-ing. That drink looks so... What's another adjective? That drink looks so chilly. Mmm. Nelly is... Ooh, I'm gonna use a good verb here. Gulp. When you drink something real fast, she is gulp. Nellie is gulping, is gulping her fizzy, fizzy treat. Treat. Okay, let's end with some emotions. Let's end with some feelings. She feels so <sighs> relaxed and peaceful. Okay, here's our poem written about this photo. Nellie played soccer today. Now she is sweaty and thirsty. She is sipping a soda. The soda is green like a grape. The ice in the glass is clinking. That drink looks so chilly. Nellie is gulping her fizzy treat. She feels so relaxed and peaceful. Great job, learners. Now I want to write my own poem. I'm going to use a photo of something from my life to help give me ideas for a poem. Let's see, what kind of good photos do I have? Oh, look at this photo of me climbing a tree. Tree climbing is one of my favorite things to do. Do you like to climb trees? Me too. I'm gonna use this photo as inspiration to give me ideas for my own poem. Let's do the same process with this photo. Will you help me? Okay, so remember, we need some good words for my poem. Here we go. The topic, or the idea I'm writing about, is going to be climbing, all right? Climbing trees, all right? Because climbing trees is something I do all the time. I am climbing trees all the time. Climbing trees. Okay, when you look at this photo of me in a tree, what are some adjectives, some describing words 
that come to your brain? Let's see, adjectives. I think of scratchy. If you think of the bark, scratchy. Scratchy. I think of, let's see, when I'm in a tree, I feel excited. Oh, except that, that could be an emotion, right? Excited. I'm gonna put that down here under how I feel. Excited. What are some more adjectives to describe the tree? Maybe breezy. You can feel the breeze. You can feel the wind. I'm going to say breezy. Breezy. Okay. Maybe high. When you're in a tree, you're high up, right? High. Okay, let's go back down to adjectives. I got a little too excited, right? I put excited for for emotions. I'm sorry, what are some more emotions that this photo makes you think? Or when you were in a tree, what are some emotions that you feel? Excited, mm, ah, another word for excited is giddy. Giddy is when you're so excited you can't even sit still. So say that with me, giddy, giddy. I'm gonna put that down. That's how I feel when I'm up in a tree. And I also feel a little bit relaxed, right? Same as that last poem, relaxed. It's very peaceful up in a tree, relaxed. Okay, let's think of some verbs, some action words for climbing a tree. We already have climbing. What else? What might the other animals in the tree be doing? Hmm, the squirrels might be resting. Sometimes squirrels rest in the tree. Right? So I'm going to say the squirrel is resting. Thank you. Resting. What do you think the birds are doing in the tree? The birds might be, I just thought of a rhyming word, resting. The birds are nesting. They're making their nests. The birds are nest. Ing. Okay, resting, nesting, I am climbing. Okay, this is giving me some good ideas. Are you ready to write a poem with me about my photo? Okay, here's my poem. It's called Me in a Tree. I'm going to use these words you helped me think of. Let's see, when, I'm going to start with when I am climbing, climbing a tree. I feel ah, free. I feel free. That's my emotion. The bark is scratchy. Scratchy under my feet. The leaves are swishing. The leaves are swishing in the breeze. It is like the tree is talking, talking to me. I can see, remember the other animals we talked about? I can see the birds nesting. I can see the squirrels resting. Ooh, rhyming words. Resting. I feel so giddy. I feel so giddy up here so high. Up here so high. All right, let's read it one more time. Read with me. Me in a tree. When I am climbing a tree, I feel free. The bark is scratchy under my feet. The leaves are swishing in the breeze. It is like the tree is talking to me. I can see the birds nesting. I can see the squirrels resting. I feel so giddy up here so high. All right, learners, I'm so excited. We have a special guest with us today for our Art Week lesson on poetry. I'm very excited to introduce you to Ms. Lisa Villanueva. She is an art teacher and a community activist, and she's here to help us learn more about poetry. I will let you introduce yourself. 
Thank you, Miss Adrian. My name is Lisa Villanueva, and most kids call me Miss V because they cannot pronounce Villanueva. So you could call me Miss V. And I am an art instructor as well as a community activist. Now, a community activist is where people, um, a community is where people live. So like your neighborhood, where you live. And the other thing is I'm an activist and this is the person that helps people get what is right for them. And um, they just help people. So that's why I am a community activist. And I wanted you to know about that so that you can know the words that I'm using. Now, I also fight for human rights and social justice. And human, you know we're all human, so you know what that is. And social justice is just for fair treatment of all people. So that's what social justice is. So I am going to bring a person that you're very familiar with that does so many good things for good people. And, and sometimes he even does it for bad people, but he's a really good person. And it is a character also, and he is a superhero. And this would be the Black Panther. Now you guys remember him in the Black Panther movie, I am sure. And that is what the Black Panther did. He is a social justice person. He fights for good things all the time, but he is a fictional character, which is make-believe, and he's a superhero, which is just a good person. And then he's only in movies and comic books. And comic books are magazines with a lot of pictures and a lot of words in it. So the actor who played the Black Panther in the movie, and I hope you've seen the movie, and if not, you gotta ask your mom and dad, can you see it? Or your grandma or grandpa or whoever has the movie access, ask them, can you see Black Panther? Because the actor who did the acting is Chadwick Boseman. And Chadwick Boseman also did social justice because he did a lot of good things in the community and he gave back to the community and that's the real person. So he did a lot of things that his character, the superhero, the Black Panther did as well. And we wanted to show you who he was. So that is also, I wanted to let you know, he played in movies with other characters that were really good people. And he played a guy named Jackie Robinson. And he also played a man named James Brown in the movie. And he played a man named Thurgood Marshall in the movie, as well as the one we're talking about today, The Black Panther. And all those movies are all about good people that are real super heroes and do social justice like I do. So one thing I want to do is let's do a poem about the Black Panther. So I want you to get out your sheet of paper and your pencil and I want you to write down three words that best describes the Black Panther. Now let me tell you the words I use so you can have an example. I use adjectives, and adjectives, you know what they are, so listen to my adjectives that I use. I use friendly, helpful, and fearless, because a Black Panther is not scared of anything. So, I want you to write down your three words. Yes, you can use one of mine but write down at least two of your own, okay? Now, I want you to take those words and I want you to cut those words out and I want you to put those words on the side of your coloring page of the Black Panther. And I'm gonna show you my coloring page 
that I got from parents, best coloring pages for kids.com and just look for the Black Panther as best coloring pages for kids.com. And this is the picture I chose because he's in the pose, kind of like the one we saw before that Miss Adrian put up. You see his fist, but he's here. So we're gonna take one of our pictures and you can have any picture you want because if you want another picture, that's okay. That's the one I chose. So I took my words and that was friendly, helpful, and fearless. See the words? And I cut them out and then I just glued them to my Black Panther page. And hopefully you can see that clear. Now get your crayons out because I want you to start coloring your Black Panther. Now you know you have to have the color black because black is for the Black Panther. So I'm going to show you a little bit of coloring that I did and how I started on it. And this is the way I started out. So I use black and gold. And I use yellow for gold because I didn't have the real gold, but it looked gold on the sheet. And I want you to see the gold marks I made. Make sure you do his belt because his belt is gold. And everywhere there was a line, I put a gold mark, even on his eyes up here. So now I want you to start coloring that all in. You should be just about done. And when you're done, I want you to go to the bottom of the page. And I want you to put something on there that a person that's a community activist, like the Black Panther, a social justice person, I want you to put, what do they do? So I put one of the nice things that they do is they feed hungry people. So I put feed hungry people on the bottom of my page. And I'm going to show you just what I did so that you could see it because there's my black panther all colored in. And right on the bottom, I put feed hungry people. Because that's what people that are good superheroes and social justice that's what they do. And now, guess what? You are now a social justice hero. And you painted it right on your picture. So I want you to take your picture and give it to your teacher or give it to your parents because you could do this at home with your brother and your sister and your friends. You can do it with everybody. And you're going to put them all together. And whoever holds it, the best reader, holds all the papers or the teacher. And then they read all the words. So let's go back to my words. They read it like friendly, helpful, fearless, and feed hungry people. And then they go to the next page. And they read the words again. And all that is read together. And that's a poem. That's a social justice poem. And we did it all together. And it's a collaborative poem. So I know you learned a lot of words today. And one of the words you did that you learned before was community, because I heard you know what that is. And then you learn activists, you learn fictional, you learn super superhero, you learn comic books, and you learn social justice. And you better remember that social justice because you're all now social justice heroes. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy your day. Thank you so much, Ms. V, for giving us ideas to write poetry about things that really matter and people that we admire. I'm so excited to go write my poem. Thank you. We'll see you back in a few days. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, learners, that's all for today. I want to challenge you to use a photograph or something to give you an idea and write your own poem. Check out the lesson materials and you can use a note catcher just like this to write a poem about something in your life or something that matters to you. 
All right, you have finished another lesson with me. Congratulations. We are on letter number five. Do you remember our riddle? What has 10 letters and starts with gas? So far we have A-U-T-O. Today's letter is dun, 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 dun. M. A-U-T-O-M. Okay. Tune back on Thursday for the next letter and some more Art Week learning. Bye learners, see you next time. are used to make up this person's face. See if you can name every vegetable, every fruit, and every random food that he has used to create this face. Do you see the green grapes? Do you see plums? Mulberries? Melon? Hazelnut? Pears? Cherries? Peaches? Corn? Garlic? Onions? Pea pods? eggplants, squash, cucumber, artichokes, and wheat. Archambole painted each piece of fruit realistically and then arranged them to form an actual human face. Look at the row of peas in a pod to make for the perfectly spaced teeth. Look for the ripe cherries to form the plump lips. Look at this round peach that creates the perfect rosy cheek. And check out the cucumber that imitates a bumpy and weathered nose. Why do you think the artist might have selected those items for each part of the painting? Why a cucumber for a nose? Why a peach for a cheek? Why would that be what he had picked? Would you pick the same? If we zoom in here, you can see that the artist's name is woven into the wheat on the collar. The date, 1572, can also be found on his shoulder. Let's learn a little bit more about this artist. His name is Giuseppe Archimboldi. He was born in Milan, Italy, and he began his work as an artist at the Milan Cathedral. He started by painting stained glass, by doing tapestries, fabrics, and other paintings at the cathedral. 
Archimboldi was best known for these composite head paintings, which is when he would use a portrait or create a portrait out of objects like fruit, flowers, books, vegetables, and he's even used plates of meat to create a portrait before. Super creative. During his time, he became famous for these paintings because just like we do today, just like we look at this painting and think what a creative use of everyday objects, that was how people reacted then. Some people would look at his paintings and laugh and look at them with humor. Others would be completely amazed at what he was able to come up with. They would be shocked at the originality of his paintings. And so he became incredibly famous for this. This painting, which is titled Summer, which is kind of a silly name for a painting about a face made out of fruits and vegetables, is part of his series called Four Seasons, and it'll make sense in a second why he named it Summer. So he used fruits and vegetables from each of those seasons to create the portraits. So for example, this summer portrait has fruits and vegetables that would grow in the summertime, and that's the only vegetables and fruits that he used for this painting and so on and so forth for spring and summer and fall and winter. He also said that the reason why he named these paintings after the months is because he used a metaphor. He said that each season is like a stage of human life. So for example, spring would stand for youth, winter would stand for old age, and summer shows a man in his prime. So we talked about how Archimboldi was able to compare this man who was in his prime to the season of summer. And so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing some comparisons of our own. And specifically, we're going to be using something called a simile, which is a tool that we can use to compare two different things. So in this case, a simile is used to compare two objects, two things, two items, um, using the word like or as. And so what's really, really important for this lesson is that you have to use the word like or as, or it is not a simile, it becomes a metaphor if you're comparing two things without those words. So we are just focused on similes for this lesson. We are actually going to write a poem using similes, and it's gonna be kind of a neat one because we're also going to tie in Archimbaldi's painting of that face made out of fruits and vegetables too, so it's going to be kind of fun. Okay, so quick review. A simile is something that we use to compare two things, but we have to use the word like and as. Got that stuck in your brain? So for example, here's a simile that we could use based on Archimbaldi's painting. We could say something like their lips were as sweet as cherries. Did you hear the word as in there to compare the lips to cherries? His teeth were like peas in a pod. Okay, did you hear the word like to compare the teeth to peas in a pod? He had skin as soft as a peach. Okay, again, the word as, and we're comparing his skin to a peach. And a long and bumpy nose like a cucumber. Eyes like blueberries hair that twists like a grapevine. Okay, now that I've given you some examples of similes, I want you to think of some of your own. Think about some of your features. How could you compare some of your features to that of a fruit or a vegetable or any other kind of food? And if you can't think of ways to that you could compare your own, maybe you could look at an animal, a friend, a family member, um, somebody even from a character in a book or a movie or a TV series that you like. You can even use me if you would like to. Try to compare the features to some kind of a fruit or vegetable or food of your choosing. Got some in mind? Have someone in mind that you can compare them to? Think about it and say it out loud or write it down. Okay, so now we're gonna write another fo fun poem. And I know kids are always freaked out of poems, but you guys, this is going to be short. And when I say short, I mean like, 
five or six lines short, like a really short poem, and it's gonna be a fun one. So you can choose to either do a silly poem, an admiration poem, which just means like either you like someone or you love them, and guys, I'm not talking about silly love, I'm talking about like, I love my mom, I love my dog, and so I could absolutely write an admiration poem about my mom or my dog. Um, I also really care about my best friend, and I could write about her in this poem as well. So it doesn't have to be like a sappy love poem. It can be one that you just care about that person. So you could write it for a guardian, you could write it for a friend, you could write it for any person that you would choose. Okay, so this one is going to be about my dog. His name is Diesel and he is a big yellow lab and really rambunctious and full of energy and I'll bring him out in a little bit so you can see him. Brown eyes like almonds. Hair as golden as wheat growing in the sun. Skin as soft as a peach. That's it, guys, that's it. Three lines, that's all I'm asking for for this poem. I would love to see five or six, but three, totally acceptable. Or, my son Bodhi, who is only three, loves Halloween. It's one of his favorite things to talk about is Halloween and all of the decorations that come up around Halloween. And so he might get a kick out of a poem that you could write about a wicked witch. And you could say something like, skin as green as peas, nose like a bumpy cucumber, teeth like rotten corn kernels, hair as dry as burned straw. Okay, can you picture? this ugly, wicked witch in this poem, that's what I really want you guys to do. So I want you to think of one that could be just as silly as can be, and I want you to use some of your similes, you have to include similes in this poem, to compare features on that person's face and compare them to a fruit, a vegetable, or any other kind of food. Make sense? Sound good? Okay, go do it. Well, mine might look a little bit more realistic. 
Um, and actually, Bodhi, I kind of like your idea. So Bodhi just handed me this strawberry, and I'm thinking that this actually kind of reminds me of a nose. Uh, I know that for some of you, maybe not really, but it's kind of a similar shape to a nose. And the little oh. seeds on the strawberry remind me a little bit of like the pores on your skin. So I'm going to use that for my nose. And I need some eyes, and I'm going to use some blueberries Thanks. for my eyes. And, and the reason why is because I'm looking at my little Bodhi and his eyes are so blue. So I can think of a simile for these blueberries and Bodhi's eyes, which is part of my job right now. My, part of my job is to come up with a poem about a family member, about a loved one, about somebody that we want to write about and have some similes in it. So I'm gonna say that Bodhi's eyes are blue, like the ripest blueberries. And that's gonna be part of my poem that I'll write about Bodhi. And I'm gonna put the eyes on there and I have strawberry for a nose and melon for a mouth right now. And I think that I might take little bits of celery to make tea. And I'll kind of like rip the teeth a little bit, maybe. See if it works out. Because I feel like they're, they're similar sizes and hopefully your teeth aren't green like celery. But if I were writing about someone like maybe a witch, like that, that poem that we had talked about earlier, maybe their teeth are green. Maybe I could compare somebody who hadn't brushed their teeth in a really long time. I could compare their teeth to being as green as celery and then there's my sim simile right there also. Right, Bodhi? Mm -hmm. Do you brush your teeth? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So they're not green? Mm -hmm. What color are your teeth? Um, White? White. Okay, good. Okay, so I have some teeth. I have my nose. I have my blueberries for eyes. And I have some lettuce that I think is gonna make kind of some funny hair. Kind of some funny hair for my little face man. And I'm gonna kind of just flop it on top of him. Like he has like a comb over, like he's, he's brushed his hair back to be all fancy for school and stuff. And now I think that I still want some ears too. What do you think, buddy? Should my guy have some ears? My, does my have ears? Yours has ears? Oh, yours does have ears. Yours has these cute little cherry tomatoes for ears, huh? No, this. Oh. <laughs> and the fun thing about this kind of art is you can just go ahead and snack while you're making your art. Right, Bodhi? Are those for you or can mom have one? Um, my, my, Thank ones. you. Thank you for sharing. That was kind of you. Oh, that one? That's okay. So I'm going to use these cute little cherry tomatoes that we got out of our garden for ears. And I can't think of anything else that I need on my face. Can you think of anything you need on your face? Are you going to add anything else? Mom, my face have um, this. You have your face also? Well, we will take some fantastic pictures. I'm sure that they're going to be the most beautiful pictures ever in the whole world. Um, of these art. Oh, I need some more blueberries, apparently, you guys. We'll take some pictures of Bodhi's abstract face art. You guys, your art can be as realistic as you want it to be, or it can be as artistically abstract as Bodhi's, meaning that it doesn't look like a real face at all. Wait till you see Bodhi's, it's pretty fantastic. Or you can try to create yours to look very realistic, as realistic as you can using food like mine, and then come up with those similes, like I said, and I'm going to think of another one with this strawberry. Maybe I could say that um, if I were writing a poem about the winter or something, you know how your nose gets nice and red in the winter when it's really cold outside, especially here in Colorado? We could say that your nose was as red as a strawberry, and that would kind of tell your reader that it was cold outside without even having to tell them. And this would make sense, actually, the more that I'm thinking about it, maybe my painting is from the winter because not only does my guy have red nose from the cold outside, but his ears are also red, Mom, right? Th this one was uh, seeds. Yes, but his ears are red also, and so when I'm cold outside, especially here in Colorado, my Not ears yet. cold, 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 cold. Yes, cold. My ears turn red, so maybe. I could title mine something about winter time in Colorado with my red ears 
as red as cherry tomatoes. Mom, See my simile? And my nose, that was like a ripe strawberry. Again, my simile. And eyes as blue as blueberries, just like my, my sweet little Bodie over here. Good job. And then I could compose my poem, which is your next job. Your next job is to go make your art if you have permission from your, your family to use the fruits and vegetables and other food inside your home. Go make your art. And as you're making your art, come up with some similes, just like we were as we were just looking at it. Or create a poem just from your mind. You could be thinking how sweet a poem would be for a family member. What a great birthday gift for a loved one to give them a poem talking about how, how they look and what they remind you of. I hope that you guys will share these Mom. with me. Um, please check out the link for where to share. I can't wait to see the pictures of your food face art. I can't wait to see the pictures that you create painting with potatoes coming up really soon. And I can't wait to read your poems that include similes. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Dildo. I'm an instructor here at the Bemis School of Art. Today I'm gonna to show you a quick little fun thing you can do with the kids at home. It's a nice little craft that's really cheap and easy. We are doing potato printing. So just like you carve a block to do a traditional print, we're carving potatoes. Cheap, they're easy, you probably have some old ones rotting in the bottom of your fridge, so now would be the time to put them to use. For these, I cut a slice that makes a nice stamp size, something about the hand, and then I used a pointed spoon, or you can use a bottle opener, or a butter knife even, and just scrape away to get a nice little pattern. Kind of the way you would a block. This is easy for the kids though, because no sharp tools involved, really easy, really cheap, and they can kind of go ham because it's potatoes. So here I've just made a silly little smiley face into my block, cutting it away. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're just playing. Make a little print out of it, something that's semi-deep, so enough that the ink doesn't go all the way into the crevices here. And then you can use block printing ink to fill it up, or some cheap black acrylic paint from the grocery store. Doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to be crazy. Lightly brush it on top, making sure not to fill the holes where you've carved away, because those are things that you want to remain white on the paper. So make sure you're just lightly coating it. If you have a really intense pattern, it's gonna take a little bit more paint, a little bit more time. Just be careful not to fill the wrong spots with paint. So I've coated it, lightly brushed my stamp. I'm just gonna press it against the paper. Light pressure, not mashing it all the way and making sure you're not going so light that the ink can't transfer. Don't push all the way through because you don't want to smush it or let any of the juices that are in the potato out. Just enough pressure to get that ink to transfer. So here's my little smiley face man. Clearly you're not going to get the most distinct patterns, not too much detail out of it, but it's really fun for the kids. You can play with different patterns. Here I've made some squiggles to make a stamp. You can try swirls or hearts, simple little things that the kids will love. Remember not to focus on perfection with a potato print, focus on having fun. Find other objects at home that you can play with, things in the fridge that you can cut apart. Fruits and vegetables make amazing natural printing products. Have some fun, explore, try a couple new techniques, and we'll see you in the classroom soon.